All right. Well, uh, I'd like to welcome you here to uh, Zycon's Innovation Center here in Chicago, Illinois. I uh, hope the first half of your uh, day there at Printing United has been going well and that you've been seeing uh, lots of interesting technology products, software and services. Today, we're gonna be showing off the Zycon PX3300, which is Zycon's UV-based inkjet. Uh, right now, I have the press running and we're running what we call our uh, hybrid configuration. So we are running um, our Zycon PX3300 in line with our Zycon LCU, which is our label converting unit. So we're doing digital printing, but with conventional uh, semi-rotary die cutting all in one process. Uh, right now we are just printing one label. This is our Heavenly Hells beer label and we're printing this on a metallic media. So we are printing this in four color plus our white ink. And we can do that at the full speed of the Zycon PX3300, which is 164 feet per minute at 600 DPI. Now, while we're doing just one label right now, this is full digital and what we call full rotary. So all of my labels could have something different about them. We are constrained obviously by whatever die plate we have on the uh, LCU here. But if I wanted to have different SKUs, uh, different uh, colors of labels for different items, that would be no problem thanks to uh, the software that runs our PX3300, which is X800, and the fact that we've developed the software that talks to the hardware that eventually talks to the print heads, which makes variable data no problem. Along with that, with our full rotary printing, uh, we also have the ability of no frame sizes, so that means that we can make the maximum use of your web to help you save money by using every inch of that web that we can. So while this is printing, we'll take a look at um, the print coming out, which again, this is our Heavenly Hells label. And we're running that into our LCU 33, our label converting unit, which is a 13 inch label converting unit. The Panther itself, which is the PX3300, can have the option to be run um, standalone. So with its internal unwind and rewind, or as we have shown here, it can be easily moved over to run uh, in line with a finishing a piece of finishing equipment. So as we run, what we have here in the LCU is we have a, a small buffer to kind of act as uh, you know a, a mechanical break between the uh, PX3300 and the LCU. From there, it's going into a web alignment module to make sure that. Uh, there's no variance in where the web is feeding as it goes into the LCU. After that, we're going into a varnish station. Right now, because this is UV inkjet print, I really don't have a need to lay down any varnish. The print that comes out of the Zycon PX3300 is very durable. So we find that this is a, a great solution for those that need to have print that may end up in uh, harsh environments, wet environments, um, or anything that might be chemical related. So I do have the option here to further enhance the protection on these labels by laying down a varnish. I also have the option to apply a laminate if that is what the customer requests. And I can also do cast and cure, which is currently what we have up here. From there, we are feeding through the UV curing lamp and we're going into our semi-rotary semi die cut station. So with this, I don't need to have a die plate that is the exact length and repeat of my image. Uh, just as long as the die plate and the image are the correct size, uh, the, you can see here that the LCU is uh, using its sled to get the print to match up with the die cylinder, which is running at full rotary uh, speeds. After that, we are going into our matrix removal and you can see that being rewound up here. And then finally, after that, we are slitting into two rolls, one going to the upper rewind and one going to the lower rewind. And the LCU 33 can be run at speeds, uh, depending on the die plate uh, that also match the PX3300. Right now, I am only running the PX3300 at uh, uh, 35 meters per minute, but we could run this at 50 meters per minute, no problem, as long as we have a die plate that is of the correct size. So that's just a little brief overview on the finishing side of things. I'd like to go back to the PX3300 and let's dive into that just a little bit more. So 
So one thing that I'd like to point off right point out right away is uh, the compact footprint and all in one nature of the PX3300. Uh, sort of what you see on the floor here is is more or less what you get. So uh, we don't have a whole bunch of external units such as ink tanks or uh, other devices that need to be you know, spread out around the PX3300, it has a really nice compact footprint that kind of contains everything in the press itself. So what I like to do is kind of show a little bit of you know, the web path going from the unwind to the rewind, just so we can take a look at some of the features of the PX3300. So as I mentioned, we have the ability to run this in both configurations for uh, using the internal unwind and rewind or easily uh, going to an external device as well. Over here, after we have our, our unwind, which we can put up to a 26-inch um, diameter roll on this press, uh, we do have a splice table here to make changing out rolls nice and easy. After the splice table, we have a uh, seam detection device. So, uh, you know, the, the heart of the engine is always going to be the print heads in a, in a inkjet press, and you want to protect those. So what that will do is if it does detect a seam uh, from the manufacturer's roll, it will finish printing and get that seam just up to the print head, raise the print heads, and allow you to feed that through before continuing on so that we don't have any head strikes while we're printing. After that, we're going into an active aligner so that we can, again, make sure that uh, our role or our web is always in the same position in web direction so that when we do go to finishing, uh, we won't have any registration issues. After that, we are going into a Corona treater. So, uh, you know, with UV inkjet, when you're, when you're putting ink on media, uh, it, it's vital to have the correct surface tension for that media. Now, we like to, uh, we generally recommend that you use, you know, medias that have some sort of top coat for inkjet. That's going to really get you the best print quality and the best adhesion. But if you are running something that maybe doesn't have that right top coat, we do have the ability to Corona treat and change that surface energy a little to help us maybe achieve that better adhesion or better print quality. From there, we do feed into the engine. We first go past a uh, cleaning roller. So we do have a, a, a web cleaner on here to take any surface contaminants off. And then once we get into the print engine, we also have an anti-static bar to help reduce any static that might be built up on the media. Now, when the engine is in print mode, what happens is the print head or the print base will come forward to go over the media as we see right now. Uh, some things I want to point out right here is as we, as I had mentioned, we have a four color plus white setup. So we have uh, white first, we will then pin the white with a low power LED lamp, and then we will lay down our uh, process colors and be able to pin again after that. Now, as I mentioned, the heart of an inkjet press really is the print heads. So we, are, uh, we have a couple of systems built in to help you achieve the most productivity and keep your downtime minimal. If you do have any issues with a print head, say a clogged or a misjetting nozzle, we're able to take this and isolate just that one head and try and purge ink through it to maybe push out of the nozzle whatever might be in there. If for some whatever reason that does not work, then uh, we can also use the built-in flush solution that's easily selected by using these valves up here and uh, really run some flush through those heads. It's, it really, uh, it's like presser washing the heads almost. It really pushes out whatever might be in there. If something uh, does happen to a head that we have to replace it for whatever reason, the head replacement uh, process is completely toolless. It's easy to get in and out. And all of the alignment uh, uh, for the head is brought up to the front of the press. So you can uh, easily get that head realigned uh, in minimal time to again, keep your productivity and your press up and running uh, for as long as possible for production. Now, one of the things that I'd really like to point out is we are printing now using a uh, LED only cured ink. So there's some great benefits to that. The first one being that we no longer have to worry about the consumable of a mercury lamp for curing. So that's not only something that uh, is environmentally friendly because we don't have the mercury in that lamp. We also don't have to worry about replacing that lamp and the cost of that lamp because again, we are only using solid state technology in LEDs to cure this ink. The other great thing about that is there is no warm up or cool down time when I'm starting to print. So as soon as my uh, print heads are in position, I can give my press the okay to print and it will just start printing and the LEDs will turn on instantly. That also means that we have uh, 
savings in energy because we no longer have a uh, standard mercury lamp sitting here idle in between jobs or runs or when the operator is working on it. When we're not printing, everything is off and the, en the engine itself is saving costs. So after the image has been laid down, we do go into that LED curing. And then after that, we go into a cooling roller to remove any excess heat from the media before we come out to our inspection table here, which is a nice big area for the operator to uh, be able to view prints and inspect them. And then from there, we can go to, again, like I said, the internal rewind or go to an external device. Now, the PX3300 is a 13-inch or 333 millimeter wide device, so we can, feed, we can actually image 13 inches. Uh, we could feed a little bit larger media in there than that. We also offer it in a uh, PX2200 variant for those that are maybe only in need of uh, 8.6 uh, inch print width. Uh, we find that, you know, this is again, what we're, we're, we're focusing towards the label industry. So we are looking at generally coat printing on coated papers, vinyl, PPs, PEs, PETs, uh, metalized media as you see here. And we can also print on clear, and any of those we can print on with a PT, PET liner as well. So if uh, your job or your finishing calls for paper or PET liner, running either of those is no problem. One of the other features that's kind of built into the press that gives you a couple of different options for uh, what you're able to produce with it is we do have the ability to slow the engine down to half speed and able to uh, then lay down what we call a double jet of white. Uh, what that does is it's called our haptics mode and it allows for one of two things. If you're printing on a clear media that might be going on a dark surface, you're going to get what we consider a um, silk screen opacity white. And again, we can do that at uh, 64 feet per minute. The other thing we can do is if you're printing on a white media, and you won't be able to see it here on screen, but they sh I hopefully they will have some samples if you'd like to see the haptics, we can uh, get a nice ink film from that double jet white and able to do some really nice, say like health and beauty labels that look very high end that have this nice texture on them. So be sure to ask or look for some samples with those. So, well, the, uh, while we're running a 600 DPI engine, we are powering it with our X800 workflow. That is our RIP and our workflow to get files in and ready for print. Uh, now, the reason I mentioned that it's a 600 DPI engine is we are actually ripping your files at 1200 DPI, and we're using that additional image data to figure out what drop size to use for your print. So if you do have fine text or fine barcodes, we can actually print, you know, say white or knockout text down to four point without any issue on here. Um, we're going to use the smaller drop size for that. We don't need to print our largest drop there. We can use a smaller drop size to be able to get the most um, fine quality image uh, from your files and make them look photo quality and, and very high resolution. Now, I do want to just uh, kind of show off a little bit with X800. So give me one second while I switch my screen here. So what you're seeing right now is my press. This is the operator's control for the engine. And one of the great things about all Zycon engines is the software between all of them is identical. So if you have an op if you have a Zycon engine already or you're looking at maybe expanding in the future, your operators will know how to use the software already. The real um, power of the engine comes in from our X800 workflow. So this is a hot folder based workflow. This is how we're gonna get the files into your engine and process them for print. So if we take a quick look at the file that I'm do working on here, which is our Hell's uh, beer label that we just printed, it's coming in as a one-up label that we're then laying out with gutter and eye marks to be ready for uh, die cutting all in X800. There's multiple steps that it takes to get there. And all these steps are what we consider a job ticket, um, which is just an XML format. So X800, while it is a uh, workflow that Zycon has been working on over the past 20 years, um, it is very open architecture. So it uses XML, it uses JDF, uh, and there's multiple ways to communicate with it. So whatever workflow you may already have, if it's uh, ESCO or XFI, uh, we can easily integrate with that. 
So as I mentioned, uh, what we're doing here is we're taking that one-up label and we're using the layout feature of X800 to then lay that out for my die plate, which happens to be a two by two die plate. And if I come over to the finishing, then I can also tell it, you know, what are my gutters on that die plate? And here it's a, a quarter and an eighth. And then finally, at the end here, I'm using what we call our metadata module, which is a way of dynamically adding content to your label. So here I'm doing just something simple like adding rectangles so that my finishing device can synchronize to the eye marks uh, that I'm then using X800 to create. But we can also use it for much more. Uh, built-in numbering, if you want to do sequential numbering on your labels, that is a, a built-in feature of X800. Um, we can also do variable barcoding. Uh, and if you uh, had, saw any presentations on our very one, we can also do a lot with graphics as far as making every label unique or using a database to bring in graphic elements uh, onto your already existing label. So that's a little overview of the Zycon PX3300, including our inline LCU for finishing. Um, I thank you for stopping by and listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, uh, you're feel free to ask me. I'm live here in Chicago or reach out to any of our associates on the floor. Donna, do we have any questions? Sorry, Ryan, Donna's talking to a customer. Oh, no worries. Is there any way I can help you? There's no customers up. All right. All right. Thank you very much. Take care and enjoy the rest of your show. Thanks. Bye. Oh, jeez. <laughs> she signed off. Oh, well. We'll just keep it open.